If you want to create many variants of a video and need to replace clips, texts, colors and other effect parameters, then the workflow I show you in this tutorial is for you. With the help of automation blocks you can quickly set up a spreadsheet which lists the properties you want to modify. Then you can simply modify the spreadsheet and import all changes to Premiere Pro in one click. For this workflow we need the tools you find in the automation blocks library in the category Templates Clip Property Spreadsheet. First we select the tool Export Properties of Selected Clips to Spreadsheet. Now in the active sequence we select the clips which we plan to modify and choose here the location where the spreadsheet file should be saved. Make sure to enter .csv as file format at the end of the file name. Now we run the tool and then we can open the generated spreadsheet in OpenOffice, Excel, Apple Numbers, Google Docs or whichever spreadsheet application you want. The spreadsheet contains all the parameters of the exported clips which can be modified and our first job is to find the ones we actually want to modify. The first column contains the name of the clip, so here are all parameters of woman.png, which is this clip in video track 1. And then follow all parameters of rustic fall title, which is this motion graphics template here in video track 2. The second and third column contains the actual parameters of the clip and the value they currently have. So for images and videos, the actual file path of the image or video is a parameter for example. Here you can see that woman.png is actually a file in the folder template files on my desktop. And I have a file melon.png in the same folder, so I can just edit the path here if I want to replace the footage. The other parameters of woman.png are the ones you find in the effect controls. So you could change the opacity, position or scale for example. If you applied effects to your clip, the effect controls would be listed here too. For checkboxes like uniform scale, you need to enter true or false as value. For position, anchor point or other 2D values, you can see that the value are two numbers in square brackets. The first one is the x value and the second one the y value. What might be a little confusing about those is that they are given as numbers between 0 and 1. So for x values, 0 is the left edge of the sequence and 1 is the right edge. And 0.5 is exactly the center of the sequence. That's why the current position is 0.5 for both x and y. For motion graphics templates, you also have all these graphic parameters. These are the controls of the template, which you see in the essential graphics panel. You can see that some entries contain nonsense values and you should just ignore those. But you can also see that the spreadsheet contains the actual texts, the color controls and checkboxes like the background on off here for example. Which controls you have of course depends on the actual template. Now let's delete everything except the parameters we actually want to modify. We want to modify the source file of the woman PNG and we want to change the two texts of the template as well as the text color. Let's set the text to hex for your workflow and for the color note that it's written as a hex code. If you open a color picker you can pick a color and then simply copy the hex code of the color from here. Let's also take a look at the last column of the spreadsheet. This tells automation blocks where exactly it finds the parameters in your project. So this means in the sequence with name main sequence in video track 1 the first clip for example. So make sure to do not delete or change this accidentally because otherwise automation blocks does not know anymore where to find the parameters in your project. Now let's save the spreadsheet, open the tool to import properties and then in the inputs panel we choose the modified spreadsheet file. If we now run the tool, all properties contained in the spreadsheet are updated instantly in the Premiere Pro project. You can see that the texts and text color changed and also the image of the woman has been replaced by the melon image. By the way, when replacing footage, Automation Blocks does the same as if you would right click on a project item and choose replace footage. So the footage changed to the melon file, but the project item name and also the clip name in the sequence are not changed. Let's drag a second copy of the project item into the sequence, then in the spreadsheet choose the woman.png again and now see what happens if we run the tool again. As you can see, for both instances of the clip the footage changed since they both use the same project item. If we instead duplicate the project item and place this duplicate in the sequence, the two are disconnected. So let's go back to the melon file in the spreadsheet and run the tool again. Now you can see that only the first clip changed back to the melon file and the second one still uses the other file. So that way you can update many clips at once or keep them separate depending on what you want. Now let's say you want to create multiple variants of your video at once, like creating localized versions in English, German, Spanish and French for example. 
Of course, you could create a separate spreadsheet for each language, but we can work even more effectively by keeping them all in a single spreadsheet. To do that, you can simply enter the desired values for these variants in the empty columns starting with the fifth column labeled with E here. So now we have an English variant in the column E, a German one in the column F, and also a Spanish and French one. All of them are copies of the column C, but with the values adjusted to what we want them to be in the respective localized videos. Once we saved the spreadsheet, we open in Automation Blocks library the tool Multi Import and Render Properties of Clips from Spreadsheet. Since this time we want to import multiple sets of data at once and render all of them. For this tool, you need to choose the columns you want to process. By default, it starts with column 5, which is our English variant here, and then process all columns up to 999. Since empty columns are skipped anyway, we can simply keep it like this to render all our four variants. If we now run the tool, it takes a few seconds to create all those variants, and then they all end up in the render queue of Adobe Media Encoder. You can see that the names of the output files are identical to the header rows in the spreadsheet. In the Inputs panel, you can also choose that the name is a combination of the name of the active sequence and that header if you want. If you want to customize the output format, of course you can do that in the Adobe Media Encoder. Alternatively, you can open the block code of the tool and choose a Media Encoder preset here in this drop-down. So if we run the tool again, you see that more copies of our project are added to the render queue and this time they use the preset we've just chosen. Of course, you can also dive deeper in the block code of the tool to customize it exactly to your needs. Right click on any block and choose help to open the documentation of exactly this block. And in this section of the documentation, we also have a tutorial which shows you from start to finish how to write a custom spreadsheet automation for Premiere Pro. So all the tools we have in our library are just examples and you can always hack those or create your own tools to get something even more tailored to your specific needs. Now as a last remark I want to highlight again how important it is to clean up your spreadsheet and only keep the rows with the parameters which we really want to change. Because Automation Block will apply all values it finds in the spreadsheet even if you didn't change them at all. So this will slow down the process a lot and also make it more error prone if you have many properties there which you don't use. So that's how easily you can change clip parameters and footage with Automation Blocks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Matthias and I'm looking forward to see you in the next one.